thank you. Good morning. It's such a pleasure and an honor to be here with you all today and to be at my first outgiving conference. Uh, I, I really would like to acknowledge and give special thanks to the Gill Foundation. They have been terrific partners with NCLR as we have helped uh, work, to, as we've worked together to strengthen the ties between the LGBT community and the Latino community. Uh, one of the things I'm really proud of is that last year for the first time, one of our workshops, the health workshops, uh, focused on the issues facing Latino transgenders. And it was fascinating for me to be able to see that uh, our community was able to come together, especially as you look at the health programs that we're offering out there, and eager to help and to understand. And uh, I do think that uh, the support we've received from the Gill Foundation has also helped us uh, do other things like receptions. We did our first reception at our conference uh, thanking Latino organizations who are supporting LGBT issues. So it has been a terrific partnership and to be here today is a sign that we're building on that and I think it really is remarkable the future that, uh, uh, of what that partnership can hold. Some of you may be familiar with NCLR but I have a feeling some of you are being introduced to NCLR. I met my counterpart from the other NCLR uh, <laughs> last night, Kathleen. Is it Kathleen? Yeah. Yes. Um, Kate, so, uh, uh, Kate. Kate. And uh, we were NCLR squared last night and uh, <laughs> had a good time. But the other NCLR, my NCLR, is uh, an organization that's been around over 40 years. We celebrate our 42nd, we'll be celebrating our 43rd anniversary this year. Uh, we started out of the war on poverty, like many other organizations that are going to be represented here on this panel. And uh, basically, what we have tried to do is follow a mission that's quite simple, and that is to help uh, uh, everyone achieve uh, the American dream to create opportunities for Hispanics in the, uh, in the U.S. and uh, really open the doors to, to the American dream very wide. And we've been very opportunity focused, but in the end, we recognize that we also are about civil rights and defending civil rights. And so we have worked collaboratively over the years with other civil rights organizations. But we do work in program areas across the spectrum of what we believe are, are high impact areas for the community to advance. And, and that are health programs. We run health clinics and, and health uh, uh, services in many of our 300 community-based affiliates across the country. We run about 100 charter schools uh, and we, several, even more, after-school programs. Uh, we do work in leadership development with Young Leaders, our Young Leaders program. We do workforce development programs where we're connecting Hispanics, oftentimes adults, who need certain sets of skills to connect into other jobs based on today's economy. And uh, we do a lot of work in education, health, uh, workforce development, and of course, in the issue of immigration and civil rights. Uh, but on immigration, it has been a priority for this organization. And we have tried to work uh, over the last few years to really try to achieve comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, and that is something that we believe, uh, we know that we can't do alone. And there have been many other uh, partners uh, who are un understand the imperative, not just for the sake of these immigrants who are here, but really when you look at the future of this country, uh, and you look at what the opportunities and the challenges are, and understanding that many of these folks, these newcomers, and many of these folks who now have been here for a generation, need the opportunity to get out from under the shadows. This is not consistent with our tradition, with, uh, with our belief in the underpinnings of our Constitution. And so we need to find a way to make sure we're achieving fairness uh, uh, for many of these individuals who are contributing mightily every day in many different uh, fashions and in very backbreaking work to other um, high-end opportunities, many as H-1B uh, entr uh, entrance into this country doing very sophisticated work. We need to find find a way to solve this problem. And so um, I'm pleased that over the history of NCLR, um, we have been able to work with the LGBT organization on a number of civil rights issues, including hate crimes legislation. I was proud to stand together when we were able to pass uh, that legislation and see it signed into law. Ending Don't Ask, Don't Tell, someone talked about uh, the day in which that bill passed. It was a mixed uh, victory for us. A lot of our folks were very disappointed when the, uh, the DREAM Act failed, but we were so excited that one of our uh, 
causes for fairness and equality, Don't Ask, Don't Tell, finally was able to pass. Uh, and we understood your exhilaration on that day, but it was, uh, it was a tough day for many of us. But, but we have worked together uh, on those issues, and of course, now we're finding ways where we can partner on this issue of immigration. Um, for us, this is something that I do believe that um, engagement with other organization matters, leadership in these organizations matters. One of the things I'm particularly proud of is one of our newest board members, Catherine Pino, is someone who has been active in the, in the LGBT community and the civil rights community. She's here today. She's on the ARCUS board. She also serves on our NCLR board, and I really appreciate she and her partner, Ingrid uh, Duran, the Latina dynamic duo, as we refer to them, for all the leadership they've done in building that bridge uh, between our communities. But uh, frankly, it is something that that we feel like we're just scratching the surface on. We really have a lot more work to do. I was so pleased that Yanira Cruz, who was here presenting a panel on aging issues and looking at elder issues in the LGBT community, Yanira is an alum of NCLR, and now she's heading up that organization, understands fundamentally why it's important for us to be opening up uh, these opportunities to bring our communities together. But, but well, one of the biggest things I think that we have is, uh, you know, for us, as we look at, uh, at uh, what binds the Latino and LGBT communities together on immigration is first that we both have experienced firsthand what is very, uh, a very broken system and the current immigration uh, system lacks both common sense and common decency. And I think it's important, uh, a message for our fellow Americans that the broken immigration system affects many Americans, but not just Latinos. And we could certainly use the LGBT community's uh, help in getting that message out. Because as we all know, the, we're all included in this immigrant population. And, uh, and the uh, lack of equity and, and, and unfairness is, is, is coming, uh, I think, to a, a peak here. I think the other uh, opportunity here we need to recognize is that we have common opponents. And it's no coincidence that many of the same people who work on anti-marriage and other anti-gay initiatives and referendums are often the very same people who now are spearheading anti-immigrant and anti-Latino legislation. And for us, if we can at least understand that the same uh, elements in those extreme communities are, 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 are targeting both of our communities, then we can, I think, come together in a much more unified way to combat these efforts. And one of the things that I think has been, for us, a, a, a welcome opportunity, we welcome the opportunity to work with the LGBT communities on how to address both these opposition movements and looking at documenting their ties and helping make that link that uh, we have found that many of these folks often have ties to extremist right wing, for us often white supremacist groups, and uh, that the root of all this is a, a profound un intolerance that we believe is un-American. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we need to get that message out both to the media and to the general public. It's very important for us that that, that be happen. This is, you know, this is not the first time, though, some folks have tried to use the wedge of immigration uh, to, to divide communities. I think we've seen that happen in the African American community, especially when you have a downturn economy. There are many who would like to feed into those anxieties of a growing Latino community uh, and look at the, the broken immigration system, capitalize on that, and really feed into the worst fears and anxieties that people have out there. We've seen that when African Americans are pitted against the Latino American community in the types of, of uh, you know, arguments that you hear about, we're taking away different people's jobs. And uh, you know, we need to be thoughtful as we uh, tackle those issues. But one of the things we certainly need to be doing is be unified. And I think in the same way where we've built a lot of strong ties and bridges to the African American leadership and try to see that uh, 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 connection in the grassroots areas on down, we need to set an example for the LGBT community at the la national level. And I think that will help us a great deal as we move forward to uh, tackle some of the more immediate issues that we're seeing extending from this broken immigration system, because it just doesn't stop there. We're seeing 
anti-immigrant, anti-Latino legislation in states like Arizona, where racial profiling and discrimination uh, for Latinos has, has been at the highest levels that we've seen, and that now there are copycat legislation uh, 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 you know, we're seeing occur in other states. Uh, it is enormous, the battle that we have ahead of us right now. And meanwhile, in the, in the Congress, you've got uh, leaders who are having hearings on uh, eviscerating the 14th Amendment, trying to repeal the 14th Amendment. I mean, we have battles on every front. It's important for us to understand that when we can come together, we can find a pathway out of this. Uh, and we can't let those um, detractors, those opponents, those folks who, who's, who see these extreme uh, avenues to a solution on this, uh, believe that they can divide and conquer. Uh, we have very different stories in our communities, but we have common, uh, I think a common struggle that we can relate to each other. And uh, for us, uh, I think we're eager to find those ties into that uh, understanding. Uh, we have a lot of work to do in the Latino community to better help our community and other organizations understand that it's important to support the LGBT community. There's a fine line anymore between civil rights and human rights. And we've got to make sure people understand that if, even if it's about our common humanity, we must especially come together at this important time. And issues like immigration, I think, can be an, a, a, a challenge, but a real opportunity to see us come together. So I hope that we can do that. Thank you.